just uh yep mm -hmm. all right all right okay so then uh uh we'll uh we can start other people uh who will come the people are still coming so then i'll uh, uh admit them it's uh, no problem there's no sign that they're coming or leaving it's okay so then uh it's a pleasure uh, to welcome today uh jean-marc vandenberg uh who is very much who was very much associated with the uh, with ua and uh, still now uh he is uh, our good friend and collaborator but also as i uh, watch the second slide uh, in his presentation the list of collaborator is yeah uh impressive so uh, then, uh, 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 Jean-Marc, please uh, start, and uh, I'll uh, switch off my camera as well. So, uh, other pa uh, all participants can ask questions, and I believe it's okay with our speaker at any oh, time. Course. So, just uh, switch uh, on your microphone and uh, ask question. Either you can write your question in chat. Then uh, at the end, I'll uh, check the chat and uh, uh, ask this question, uh, forward this question to the to the Jean Marc. Okay, then uh, Jean Marc, please. So, okay, turn. thank you, uh, thank you, Sasha, for this uh, nice uh, introduction. I'm very happy uh, to be back uh, at UEA, even if it's uh, only online. I hope in the future to come again in person uh, and to see. Uh, all friends and, uh, and colleagues. Today I'm going to talk about uh, waves, in fact, water waves, and concentrate on limiting configuration, which is the end of branch of solutions, the most nonlinear solutions uh, that we can get uh, on a branch. And uh, as Sasha mentioned, I have a, a lot of co-workers. I've been working on waves for many, many years, and I uh, listed uh, here are uh, some of them which are in a way related to the work that uh, I'm going to talk about. But uh, I want also today to present some uh, very recent results from the last few weeks, uh, which were on interfacial waves, when we have two fluids. And uh, this work is joined with Zhan Wang, uh, Xen Guan, which is a new student working with me, and also with Zhan, and uh, with Frederic Diaz. So I put this three names in red because they're related to that problem, but I don't want to, uh, no, to, to say less than the other co-workers, of course. Uh, so free surface flow, interfacial flows that we're going to talk about, it's part of uh, potential flow theory. So uh, there'll be no viscosity in this talk. The fluids that we will consider will be considered as being incompressible. Most of the talk will neglect vorticity, so we'll have a rotational flow but there will be at some stage some consideration about waves with vorticity. And uh, we won't talk about stability. We won't simply take a frame of reference which is moving with the wave so that the flow that we have will be a uh, steady flow. And uh, uh, also we did a lot of work on three-dimensional flows. Today, everything is in the simple case of a two-dimensional flow. But be worse to say how this two-dimensional flow can occur here is, for example, uh, an example of that. It is a flow that we have here past uh, uh, an object, which is at the bottom of a channel. So all this region that we have here is water. On top of it, we would have maybe air. And uh, uh, we are, if you assume, in fact, that this object that we have at the bottom is a very long half cylinder, which is perpendicular to the screen, then, of course, in a uh, in a plane which is away uh, away from the end of the cylinder, the flow will be approximately two dimensional. So that's the motivation of two dimensional flows. And for some uh, choice of the parameters, we will uh, observe a train of waves on the on the free surface. Now we're not going to study this problem. We're going just to study the train of waves. So in fact, what we're going to do is to uh, uh, assume, in fact, uh, an infinite train of waves in the x direction, a periodic train of waves, and to study uh, that particular problem. So periodic wave would be something like that, and we shall put in blue the fluid, and that curve that we have repeat itself periodically 
uh, infinitely to the right and to the left. So these are the, the waves. This wave will be periodic wave characterized by some wavelengths lambda. And of course, this is uh, the thickness of the sheet. There will be a certain depth of the fluid. So there's an important parameter, which is the ratio of lambda uh, over the depth of the fluid. And on the, uh, often these waves that behave here as this parameter, lambda over h tends to infinity, approach, uh, in fact, a solitary wave, which is a, a simple hump. This is somewhat exaggerated. It's just a sketch of the flow. A wave which looks like that and which is flat in the far field. Uh, and we're interested, as I said, about limiting configuration. Roughly, roughly speaking, we, we have a problem. We fix some parameters, the depths, maybe the surface tension, uh, other things in the, in, in the problem. And then uh, we would have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a graph which represents the speed, the, the phase speed of the wave that we can put as a function of the amplitude of the wave. Amplitude measure, measure in some way, maybe by the steepness of the wave. And what we're interested in is the limiting configuration is where is that branch going? Where is it going to end up? It's going to end up with some singularity occur. And that is what uh, we like to uh, understand better. Why to understand that? Because uh, as, uh, uh, as long as we don't know what is a limiting configuration, we have no idea what happened to the branch. It could continue like that, uh, evolve to different things. So, uh, in fact, to know the, the limiting configuration is to have completed the branch of solutions. If we can compute all the wave up to the limiting configuration, then we have a complete uh, understanding of that branch of solution. And what we obtain as a limiting configuration depends on what we include in the model. First, we'll talk about gravity wave or pure gravity waves in which the only thing that we include is the effect of gravity. Then we can talk about pure capillary waves, which are waves in which we include just the effect of surface tension without the effect of gravity. Then we can combine both effects. We can also try to move away from the assumption of irrotationality and put some vorticity. For simplicity in what we're going to do, we're going in fact to uh, just in what we present to assume that we have a constant vorticity. Also, we have uh, presently working on extending that to arbitrary distribution of vorticity. And then the idea of interfacial wave that I'll uh, clarify a little bit later when we have in fact two fluids and various extension, we can have interfacial wave with a free surface at the top. We can have flexural waves, which are a little bit related to gravity capillary waves in which we uh, try, in fact, to uh, we have an, elex uh, an elastic sheet on top of uh, uh, of the flow. Try to model maybe the effect of a layer of ice uh, at the top of the fluid, and maybe electrical fields. But we won't talk much. Uh, we won't talk at all about that in this talk. So uh, wh what is it? Is, uh, here there is a sketch. Again, we have this infinite train of periodic waves of wavelength lambda extending from x equal to minus infinity and x equal to plus infinity. Then interfacial wave, let me start with that, is a, a problem in which we take into account the motion in the fluid below the free surface and the motion in the fluid on top of the free surface. Free surface flows is which we neglect, in fact, the fluid, the, the flow in uh, the fluid too. So free surface could be, for example, fluid one would be a, a, a layer, let's say, of water bounded by this curve that we have here on top, bounded below by the bottom. And in that, we don't bother about the fluid two. We just assume that it's just a region with constant atmospheric pressure. Interfacial flows is the more generalization of that in which we do not neglect the motion in the fluid two. Uh, let's put uh, some formulation about that. It's potential flow. So uh, we have a velocity vector, which would be uh, the gradient of some potential phi, which, of course, satisfies Laplace equation. So here is simply the formulation. is the case of pre-surface flows, just one layer, just flow 
between that curve and the bottom, and he has a classical equation, Laplace equation, in the region that we have here. Uh, on the free surface, we have the kinematic boundary condition. The equation of the free surface is denoted by v u uh, m y equals zeta of x. Normal velocity vanish on that curve. We have also a kinematic boundary condition on the bottom. The vertical velocity vanish on that horizontal bottom. And then, because this zeta of x is unknown, it's a free surface. That's in fact a thing that we're interested to find. We need an extra boundary condition on the free surface. And that is known as a dynamic boundary condition coming from Bernoulli's equation that I wrote here. G is the gravity, T is the surface tension, rho is the density, and kappa is the curvature of the free surface. And then when we want to frictional waves, then that term T over rho kappa is replaced by this more complicated expression involving the second derivative of the curvature with respect to the arc length. So the basic gravity problem is the one in which we neglect, in fact, the terms written in blue. Okay. And the pure capillary problem, we have the term in blue in that equation, but we would neglect the effect of gravity. Now, uh, the way this problem is solved numerically is by boundary integral equation method. I'm not going to do a uh, talk on the description of the numerical method. Uh, they've been developed uh, intensively over, over the years. And if you're interested uh, in them, uh, that, uh, what am I doing here? You can look at uh, my book, Gravity Free Surface Flow, published in 2010. It's not my intention here to uh, to publish uh, to, to publicity for my books, but this would be, for example, a place where you can find a lot. Uh, first, I describe the method, but you can find, in fact, uh, uh, many reference to all the work which was done on these uh, numerical methods, but you can also find it in uh, different places. First, we're going to describe things in water of infinite depths. Uh, and talk, in fact, about first gravity waves. That would be the only effects which is included. And I want to, to review here, of course, a well-known uh, classical result about the limiting configuration. If you consider periodic wave, it's just the effect of gravity, one fluid, constant pressure on top, then you have waves which, when they have small amplitude, look like linear sine waves. Then as the amplitude increase, they start to develop a sharper crest, and ultimately end up with a limiting configuration, the highest wave that you, you can get, which is characterized by a discontinuity in slope at the crest with a, an enclosed angle of 120 degrees. This was predicted by Stokes already by 1847 based on an asymptotic method. Uh, the highest wave is 120 degrees was already computed with a uh, uh, higher accuracy by Mitchell in 1883, but it's only about 100 years later that uh, the existence proof for the highest wave was provided by Amick, Frankel, and Toller. There were many works, many theoretical work on proving existence of solution before, but that excluded the highest wave. But to compute the highest wave is something which uh, can be done by that method of uh, of uh, Mitchell, it's a very efficient scheme that he derived. It's so efficient that he could, uh, in fact, uh, just put a few terms in the in the series expansion that he was assuming and get by hand a solution correct to three decimal places. If you refine it, put it on a computer, you can easily get something to 15 uh, decimal places uh, if uh, you care about it. So that is the thing that you did. So that's the limiting configuration. Again, Taking a picture, as I said before, the dimension of speed at which the wave is moving versus the steepness of the wave, you get a branch of solutions which, in fact, end up at that point here with that limiting configuration with a 120 degrees angle. There is a lot of fine structure, long again and Fox, so that, in fact, that, that curve that we have here oscillate infinitely often as the wave of maximum steepness is approached. And furthermore, I think that we won't uh, discuss too much in, in, a, uh, in this talk, that when you follow the branch of solution, there are bifurcation points and many other branch of solutions which uh, bifurcate and secondary bifurcation uh, uh, complete zoo of solution close to this 120 degrees angle. 
Now, again, the picture that we have here for the, the wave, in fact, often called the Stokes wave, uh, what about if we introduce other effects? Then it's clear that we cannot no longer, in fact, most of the time, get this configuration with the 120 degrees angle. For one thing, that configuration, when and you approach it, tends to develop an infinite curvature at the crest. If you neglect the effect of the tension, that's okay, because the curvature never appears anywhere in the equation. But if you put surface tension in the problem, put in fact that across the free surface there is a, a jump in pressure proportional to the curvature, then the curvature will appear in the dynamic boundary condition, and it is therefore clear that you cannot have that configuration with 120 degrees when surface tension is included. If you look at interfacial wave, there is a problem too, because now we no longer have the flow underneath these curves, but we have the flow on top of these curves. And if you had the 120 degrees angle, and as the flow around an angle, then we know from potential flow theory that you would get in the upper fluid, just on top of this, uh, an infinite velocity. Flow around the corner, you get an infinite velocity, and again, you wouldn't be able to balance terms in the dynamic boundary condition, so that's not occur. What occur, I will, in fact, uh, describe it later, that's our new results, uh, and still you don't get the 120 degrees angle, but what you get is somewhat related to that. With constant vorticity, yes, you can still get the 120 degrees angle. When you cannot get it, what happens is that, well, the first thing is that before you reach the limiting configuration, the waves are no longer graphs in X, but become overhanging waves uh, in a rather complicated way. Now, the results of interfacial waves, I've been interested in interfacial waves uh, for a very long time, and I've been uh, working and uh, thinking on and off on that problem with Frederic Diaz, I believe, for over 15 years, and uh, I must admit we didn't make uh, uh, an enormous amount of progress on them, but recently, working with uh, Jing Guan and Zhang Guan, I think that uh, we, in a sense, uh, resolve the problem, so I'm quite happy about that. Uh, so, interfacial ways, uh, we have a fluid one and a fluid two. The, the, the computation that we're done to, to support the local solution that we have uh, by then were done for solitary ways, but similar results can be done, uh, in fact, for uh, periodic ways, because that will be something local, so it doesn't depend much if you have a periodic ways or a solitary ways. And here is some computation that he did for these solitary waves. I believe it's for a ratio of the density between the upper fluid and the lower fluids equal to 0.2. And yet you move the amplitude, you get the solitary wave, you get an overhanging profile, it's no longer a graph in X. Then you move the amplitude, it gets bigger and bigger. And then you get this mushroom type of shape. What is happening there? Uh, trying to close this thing. Yeah. So you get this uh, mushroom type of uh, shape. And ultimately, he was able to push the thing rather hard. Uh, you get this kind of configuration. It's seen as the profile wants to touch itself at one point. But, uh, uh, of course, uh, after that, it gets more and more sensitive in the numerical calculation because singularity uh, approach, so it's about the best that you can do. But from this, we can guess what is the limiting configuration and uh, try then to confirm that by uh, independent numerical calculation. Now, this is for solitary wave to get this old kind of overhanging structures. It appears in other papers, for example, by uh, this paper that we have here, which is a rather recent paper, uh, all the things by Grinshaw and Pullen, and also things by John Crew and co-workers, all of them getting to these kind of structures, which we have a bubble here, and something which looks flat at the bottom, and then an angle, and the angle, through the numerical calculation, seems again to approach 120 degrees. So this thing suggests, in fact, to have uh, the kind of limiting configuration close to that crest, 120 degrees angle, uh, a bubble, but will be on top because it's close. Uh, the way will be uh, the fluid would be at rest here, and then the fluid here, 
uh, of density rho 2 and also the flow underneath that particle with 120 degrees angle. So looking at this, we said, well, can we, because you can't really approach numerically really that solution, you get close to it, but, but can we uh, compute a local solution, something a little bit equivalent to the 120 degrees angle of Stokes, which would be and describe locally these waves. And so we were able to do it by the following model. We put an angle, gamma, that we have here, in fact, with two walls that we have here, and an angle, which according to the wave, this gamma would be 120 degrees angle, and on top, the bubble that we have here. So justification of this, uh, this structure, if we put a wall in here, and because the thing that in that fluid is at rest and we have the free surface. By local analysis, you can see that, prove that the, the free surface that you have here, this blue curve, has to be horizontal at the point O. That was shown by uh, local, uh, local analysis that was done by many people that can be found, for example, that this paper that we uh, wrote uh, a, a number of years ago. Uh, not all the solutions are, are new in that paper, but what we did is a systematic classification of the type of singularities which can occur on free surface. So we can convince ourselves that the free surface blue curve has to be horizontal at the point O. Now, in that region here, between the horizontal line and the wall, when you approach the point O inside that fluid, the fluid, uh, uh, the flow goes to zero. You approach a stagnation point. So in fact, close to the point O, if we were which we're not in here looking at what is in the flow uh, below the, the black curve, but close to that point, because it's a stagnation region, it would be similar to the argument of Stokes. And by the argument of Stokes, then we deduce that an angle gamma should be equal to 120 degrees. Now in the model, why is that model easier to solve than the interfacial flow problem? Because we only have one fluid. Well, we have the fluid one, which is here, but doesn't matter, the thing is at rest. And then we have the flow in the region two, the fluid two, that's the thing that we have, and that's separated from what's happening below the line, because we assume that we have here two rigid wall. And what we found is that we can, in fact, find very accurate solution for this by a series truncation method, which is the, it's just a one fluid problem, which is the, uh, map the thing on the unit circle and some complex plane, uh, remove the singularity, and then expand everything in powers, uh, well, if it's a, the T plane in which you have the circle in powers of T. Remove the singularity is easier because you have only, in fact, two singularity. One of them is corresponding locally. It's a, uh, an angle that I call mu in here. And, uh, well, that's a well-known singularity in potential flow, so you can remove it before expanding. And of course, the singularity at infinity, at infinity, in fact, you won't see the size of the bubble, and that will be just a flow around uh, an angle gamma. Now, to compare with interfacial flow, we need gamma, in fact, equal to 120 to 2 pi over 3. And, uh, that's what we will do. But the model that we have here uh, produced solution, in fact, for all the use of the angle gamma. So we computed these solutions, also the one which are uh, of interest to describe the interfacial wave is the case gamma equal to 2 pi over 3. And here are basically the, the results. These are numerical results. That. This is just one of the flow that we have here, and we try to put it to illustrate the flow by showing the streamline that we computed. And then in here, we put a number of solutions corresponding to different values of R. R is the ratio of the density, the density of the upper fluid divided by the density of the lower fluid. And you can see, in fact, and not surprisingly, that all for different values of R, which is the only parameter that's left in here, all these curves are essentially parallel. In fact, it's a self-similar solution. In that solution, there is no basic uh, unit length. So in fact, it's only one solution, which is scale in a certain way, uh, which are the ratios of the densities. It looks a little similar 
to what um, Xing obtained, for example, for the solitary wave and we'll do a precise comparison a little later. But then we play about that, we have this model, uh, we can not only put an angle of 120 degrees, but we can try to play with it and put all kinds of different angles. And this is uh, a number of examples. I guess this is the one with 120 degrees. This is the one when the angle gamma is close to 180. That's something with a smaller angle. And that is a solution with a very small angle gamma. Something very uh, interesting and surprising in that case, where the angle gets very small, the surface of the bubble gets very close to, in fact, a circle. And looking at that, uh, can, uh, look, look at the thing and found, in fact, that when the angle is zero, so instead of having two walls, we just have one wall, and we get a flow which goes like this around of that, with a free surface and a region of uh, stagnant fluids like that, the problem has an exact solution. And the exact solution predict, in fact, that that free surface that we have here is exactly a circle in that limit. And that's here a comparison of uh, that circle, in fact, uh, the exact solution and a numerical solution when the angle gamma is, in fact, uh, very small. It's interesting, it's an exact solution. We looked a little bit in the literature uh, we were not able to find that exact solution anywhere. It's a very simple thing. And uh, it's, quite, it's quite fascinating that there is this uh, exact solution. Why is it a circle? I, I don't, don't know really, but it is because it comes uh, from the fact that uh, from the exact solution is clearly a circle when you look at the free surface. And uh, seems to be a new uh, exact solution uh, and there, there are not many of them. So when you have a, after all, we have a, a nonlinear problem, and nonlinear problems don't, don't often have an exact uh, solution. So what we are going to do uh, in here is to, uh, I'm just checking how I'm doing. Yeah, I'm doing quite fine with the time. Now do a comparison with, uh, between the numerical calculation of uh, uh, of sin and this uh, this asymptotic solution, this local solution that we found, not asymptotic, but a local solution that we computed. And uh, in fact, you have a, a, a comparison. The blue curves in here are uh, the the solution of the what the Euler equation for these solitary waves, and the red curve is the corresponding local solution that we have. And you can see that for different values of the ratios of densities, 0.001, this one, 0.005, a bigger one, this one, 0.01 and 0.02, this is increasing, uh, in fact, the density of the upper fluid compared to uh, the lower fluid. And you can see that when the ratio of the density is quite small, you get uh, quite a good agreement between our local solutions and the solution of the Euler equation. Uh, so wh what we do, because uh, the Euler equation, we can not really compute the limiting configuration. We're computing something which is reasonably close to uh, the limiting configuration, as close as we can get uh, with uh, accurate results. And it, it agrees quite well. When you increase R, then it starts to disagree can get a disagreement between both solutions. But you can you can understand why, because if you look at this case, the idea of what we're doing is to have this bubble and underneath hit to have a 120 degrees angle. So on the scale of the bubble, the size of the bubble, you would want to approximate the blue curve that you have here by this line with the 120 degrees angle. And you can see here, that uh, it is no longer a good approximation there. When in, in, in here, you have that free surface and the free surface follow, in fact, the 120 degrees angle for a long distance. So the, the disturbances come and the difference between the red curve and the blue curve comes from the fact that the blue curve, in fact, does not follow the, the line, the wall 120 degrees uh, very far from uh, the apex that we have there. 
So that's what we wanted to say about uh, these uh, new results on uh, interfacial waves. Now, as the rest of the talk, I'd like to talk about some uh, other effects. So uh, what we did uh, is to talk, in fact, about waves with just the effect of gravity included. We concentrated on uh, interfacial waves. So what we're we going to do now, we're going to turn off the gravity and put in the problem the effect of surface tension. And for simplicity, we're going now to look simply at uh, uh, free surface flows. So we're going to neglect completely what is uh, happening in uh, the fluid too. Now that problem is an old problem of capital E waves, uh, solved under the assumption that I described. And a very uh, interesting thing is that uh, there is then uh, an exact solution, which was derived in infinite depths a long time ago by Krapper in 1957, and was uh, extended about 20 years later by Kinnersley to the problem in finite depths. It's nice as an exact solution for that problem, again, something which is very surprising. Uh, and in fact, I will uh, indicate uh, a little bit later uh, that uh, is still very, very surprising about things about these uh, exact solutions. So infinite depths, this is a, a, it's a periodic wave. So small amplitude, it looked like a linear sine wave. We increase the amplitude, it's just the opposite of gravity waves. It starts to develop a very sharp trough that we have here. And then you continue to do it, and ultimately you'll get, again, something which is in fact overhanging, a wave which is touching itself and enclosing a little small bubble. And if you continue further, then you get something which is some physical in which the free surface is crossing itself. All that comes from this exact solution, which in fact has a rather simple form. Now, I want to show uh, a surprising thing, which is the connection between these waves, which just the, you know, one layer of wet with just surface tension and a wave with constant volatility. It seems they're very two different problems. The first problem is a problem with an irritant, and uh, with constant vorticity, of course, it is uh, not uh, irrotational. And first thing is that you can, by boundary integral equation method, solve uh, these uh, these problems with uh, uh, just to the effect of uh, vorticity, maybe the effect of uh, gravity included, and you get all kind of interesting problems, very exotic flows about the system about that. In fact, flows which approach limiting configuration, in fact, with blob of uh, water, blob of fluids in rigid body rotation at the top of it. But uh, these waves also, this wave that I described on this uh, on this slide would be, uh, you know, uh, periodic waves with uh, the effect of gravity and constant vorticity, but these waves also uh, exist uh, when you turn off the gravity. Might not be very physical, but they exist. So that's another example of a wave with both gravity and vorticity. Uh, but the one that we have here at the bottom, for example, is a computation of a periodic wave that we have here with only vorticity, only constant vorticity. So vorticity wave, and there is no surface tension and no gravity. And you can see that it gives a profile a little similar that we, we have uh, in Krapper's solution. And in fact, what is surprising, it is it exactly Krapper's solution. This was shown for the first time in this paper, where it was shown, in fact, for the limiting configuration. So one with a little trap bubble, that's a profile with a little trap bubble in the wave with constant vorticity, is the same as the profile of capillary wave with the trap uh, bubble. And then we extended the sinks uh, uh, a few months ago uh, numerically and showed that uh, it uh, was true, in fact, not just for the highest wave, but for waves of arbitrary amplitude. And very interesting, recently there was a, more recently there was a paper where uh, it was shown, in fact, analytically. So what we're saying is that if you look at the wave with uh, constant vorticity and uh, increase the amplitude, 
so no gravity, just vorticity in it, you get, in fact, profiles which are exactly the same profile uh, that were obtained by Krupper for uh, surface tension wave. To get an agreement between those type of uh, both type of solutions, of course, you only get an agreement for the profile of the wave, because the flow inside will be different. One of the flow would be an irrotational flow, and the other flow will be a flow, in fact, with constant vorticity. I think it's a very, very uh, surprising uh, result. I, I don't have a, an intuitive uh, uh, understanding of it, but what it shows is that that uh, solution that uh, Krapper developed for capillary waves in a sense, reappear in other problems, which seems at first completely unrelated. So that was a fun result on it. Now, coming back about that and slowly to come to uh, an end of uh, what I want to uh, to describe, I want to leave time for, for questions. We can then move to problems and looking uh, at ways in which we include both the effect of gravity and surface tension. So the dynamic boundary condition is of this form, gy minus t over rho kappa, where kappa is the curvature. So to, 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 to do that in the first part of the talk, we neglected, in fact, the blue term. Then when we talk about capillary wave, we neglected the gravity term, but included the blue term. Now we're going to put both of them. And uh, the result of it is that you get a completely zoo uh, or a complete zoo of solutions. You get branches of solution all over the place, sometimes uh, referred to as uh, Wilton reports because Wilton was uh, one of the first to investigate it. In fact, he was not the first. There was a, a paper by a guy uh, named Harrison before him who did, in fact, exactly the same thing, but they're known as the Wilton reports. And uh, they also have uh, uh, all these branch of solutions of limiting configuration uh, with uh, involving a, prof a profile with a little trap bubble or many trap bubbles uh, like in Krapper's solution. And we're not going to talk about it, but we did a lot of extension of that to, in fact, flexural ways, trying to model waves under a layer of ice, or at least on the, an elastic sheet. You have a comp more complicated terms involving, in fact, force derivative of the profile zeta in the dynamic boundary condition. But you get again things like Wilton ripples and all kind of uh, exotic ways. It changed completely the situation with both gravity and surface tension. Even with a small value of the surface tension, uh, take an example, uh, the solitary waves, the well-known and uh, solitary waves that we know with a hump and a free surface which get confronted the far field uh, no longer uh, exist like that. What you get is waves with oscillatory tails in the far field, maybe oscillatory tails of constant amplitude or oscillatory tails of decaying amplitude. Uh, this is called elevation wave, this is called depression wave, many different ways like that. Now, one of the things that we did uh, a few years ago in a, in a number of papers is to look if uh, for all these problem of waves, can you get non-symmetric solution? That's uh, not at all obvious because we're working uh, about potential flows, so we can always reverse the direction of the flow. So you, you would think that all the solution would be symmetric. But in fact, there are uh, many, many families of solution of non symmetric waves, and I will present some of them for uh, periodic waves. Non-symmetric means that uh, you cannot find a vertical line in the profile of the wave with respect to which the wave is symmetric. So you get non-symmetric wave. In fact, you get two solutions because when you reverse the direction of the flow, you get something which is uh, different. And with, uh, with Tao and Zan, we computed a lot of them, and they were, in fact, previous work on uh, the subject, but for example, by these two, uh, by this author. So the typical uh, of symmetric waves, in fact, is a typical of these Wilton ripples uh, with gravity and surface tension. You get a wave which look like this, and it has, in fact, a lot of vertical line with respect to which the wave is symmetric. And we were able to find non-symmetric waves. What does it involve numerically? It doesn't mean that you have to write a different code. 
the core of the system to solve that uh, is essentially that you solve the, your nonlinear problem by iteration, by Newton method, you know that. And to start an iteration uh, procedure, you need an initial guess. The whole thing to get the non-symmetric wave is to have a good initial guess, which will enable you to jump on the branch of non-symmetric waves. And when, when you're on the branch, you have one solution, you can then use a continuation method to compute the whole branch. That is to say, you have a solution, use it as an initial guess to compute a solution for slightly perturbed view of the parameters, and you move along the branch. And this is the kind of thing that we did. That's a, an example of a periodic wave that we, we have here over the, the period, and this is a non-symmetric wave. It's no vertical line with respect to which the profile is symmetric. Here is another example of that. Another example and so forth. Again, a complete zoo of this non-symmetric solution, uh, which is uh, interesting because intuitively you would see that the solution should be symmetric. In fact, if you restrict your attention to wave of rather small amplitude, all these solutions that you would get are in fact symmetric. You have to move to reasonably high value of the amplitude to find them. And uh, often they were found by first computing the branch of symmetric wave up to one point, looking for a bifurcation point, move then to another branch of symmetric solution, and again do the same thing, and ultimately you get the symmetric breaking and you end up on these uh, exotic branch of solutions. So what we've been doing today, we talk about limiting configuration, trying to understand uh, how the branch of solutions terminates in water waves. So we have a complete uh, numerical picture of what, uh, what of them. We talk about the 120 degree angle and uh, the extension to uh, interfacial waves. Uh, show that when we increase, uh, include uh, other effects than the effect of gravity, uh, we often get uh, overhanging profiles, profile in which the prof uh, profile which are not a graph in X. Uh, again, the interfacial wave, we, the, the, we found uh, a new local solutions. Uh, the new local solution, by the way, uh, is connected to the Stokes solution. Because as the ratio R of the density is approaching zero, well, we should approach to the Stokes wave. And then it turns out that the scaling that we have when r goes to zero, this little bubble that we have at the top is shrinking, get all smaller and smaller, and in the limit, we, uh, well, it's a kind of singular limit, we recover the 120 degrees of stokes. And at the end, I put some of the things of non-symmetric solution. We have many more non-symmetric solutions that we computed, even for three-dimensional flows, but I just saw an example for periodic waves. So I think I will uh, I will stop on this. Uh, thank you very much, Jean-Marc. Um, impressive and many uh, many solutions, many results. Uh, so we can open uh, our discussion part of the se uh, seminar. So any questions from our participants, uh, please switch on your microphone and uh, ask your question one after another. I say, as I said, you can write uh, in the chat, okay? okay. Uh, 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 Jean-Marc, uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, the, that solution you showed with the uh, solid wall, solid wedge, say, and uh, uh, the uh, bubble of uh, another fluid on it, on the top of it. So mm -hmm. the, is the, uh, I believe the flow was computed both in uh, liquid, in fluid one and in fluid two, right? Uh, no, for that, uh, uh, no, that local solutions, you only yeah. have to compute the fluid in uh, the fluid two. That's why you can uh, get a very, very accurate solution because you only have one fluid. Okay. okay. And you know what are the singularities. Because okay. uh, two, two reasons, the fluid one is just uh, inside that angle, but you put two walls, so this completely separated. Okay. 
and inside the bubble, it's, uh, it's simply uh, because, uh, you know, it's Laplace equation, it has to be addressed. Okay, so, so, the, so, so the, uh, inside the bubble, there are no vorticity. No, in that problem is no vorticity at all. Okay, right. okay, okay. So, uh, um, okay, we have a question from uh, John Healy. John, could you? Yes, uh, oh, thank you, Mark, you. for a lovely, very nice talk. Very good. Um, oh, thank you, John. It, it reminded me um, many years ago, George Carrier suggested to me that you should be able to find a traveling wave with, with not with just gravity, no capillarity, um, which modeled a rolling wave on the ocean. You know, you can see waves on the ocean quite often will propagate for long times, as long as they have what we call a white cap on the top of the wave, which is yeah. a, region, a region of bubbles and um, air entrainment. And George Carrier suggested this could be modeled by just not putting capillarity in the free surface condition, but putting some sort of localized sink of energy. So if instead of the capillarity term, you could just put a, a sort of delta function of energy into the Bernoulli equation, um, you might be able to get a traveling wave, especially on deep water. Do you think that might be possible? Well, it depends uh, if you put something with energy, if, uh, uh, in a sense, I don't know, if it conserves energy, if you can still get the traveling wave, the wave which travel at the constant velocity. Well, it would be, another, you would have to have an energy sink in the, yeah, yeah. In, in the dynamic boundary condition. And only for one particular energy would it work, I presume. Yeah. Uh, I think in principle it should be it should work, yeah. Mm. Because you know on all this, uh, these these calculations, uh, uh, you know, we can solve the problem with different dynamic boundary conditions with all kind of different terms. Yes, it would be much easier to do it in America. Um, uh, when, uh, I didn't talk about it. When you put electrical fields, then you know, it's, it's still essentially the same thing, but you have. Uh, extra stress that appears in uh, Bernoulli's equation, uh, yeah. Maxwell stress and all that. But this uh, would be very yeah. localized at the top of the wave, you see. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, at the top of the wave, there's been things doing like that to uh, uh, model the effect of surface tension on waves close to the highest. Yeah. Yes, but this is not yeah. surface tension. This is a yeah, this would be, this would be term, term, something which is localized. Um, uh, but if it, if it would be easy to do it in your code, it might be worth just doing a few experiments. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Uh, I mean, the, the main thing would be to try to, you know, to get the the model of what the term you want. Yeah, to yeah. How to model it? Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, the, the thing you observe is that the white cap stays the same as the wave propagates. So it yeah. would be a constant energy source, but just sink. localized, it's energy sink, but just localized at the top of the wave. And the, the wave might, because if it had a corner, I don't know, but um, if you look at these waves, they don't break in the same mm -hmm. way. Yeah, yeah. What else? I believe it's called uh, spilling a breaker. Uh, so it's not uh, breaking, but uh, no, uh, there is no, no, no. not breaking, but it's uh, it's also called a uh, breaker, but uh, different. Uh, I think sometimes uh, sometime people used to call that the spilling breaker to construct yeah, 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 yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that breaking wave is usually um, in shallower water. This is this is in the ocean where it's very deep. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's interesting because it's a, it's a source, but it's no, no, it's a sink, but it's sink of energy. It's not sink of mass, right? Yes, yes. So absolutely. the how to uh, I I don't know, John, how to model it, how to model. Well, you it, yeah. Yeah. it deserves a uh, yeah. It needs a little bit of thinking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would think in principle, yeah, that could be. Well, if you mm -hmm. might, can, I, I think Carrier tried to do it analytically, but this was back in the 1960s. And yeah. he didn't 
progress, but he didn't have access to the codes that you have. Yeah. Mm. Did did he did he write something about it? No, you see, he could never. He, he, he I remember it work. <laughs> quite often, but never getting anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, uh, um, there was. Uh, it reminds me a paper, a kind of uh, isn't paper, but uh, I don't remember uh, who did it. It's uh, about the kind of that uh, rolling wave on shallow water. And um, uh, uh, it's like um, the uh, ball propagating, but uh, there is the breaking uh, breaking mm -hmm. front of that way. So there is the um, dissipation of energy on the front of it. And uh, the modeling was done by through Bernoulli equation. So uh, uh, John, you are very right. So the, something was uh, uh, placed mm -hmm. inside Bernoulli equation because Bernoulli equation is from uh, energy conservation law. We can say right, or is yeah. So then, uh, if something uh, um, there was something in Bernoulli equation added to that, but I don't remember what the. Yeah, and, uh, right. that is, a bore. You're talking about a bore, Sasha, which you have a turbulent uh -huh. bore or a laminar bore. So you can have yes. Yeah. This, yeah. That, but there is also this dissipation on the yeah, front. There will be some dissipation, certainly, but only at the bore. Everywhere else, energy is conserved. Yeah. Yeah. And only yeah. there. Yeah. So very local. And uh, yeah. There, there, yeah. And in addition, uh, the problem with shallow water is that it's uh, two-dimensional, but uh, that is the at least two-dimensional effect. And actually, it's two-dimensional and localized on the surface. <laughs> so the, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's, um, yeah, uh, okay. So that is the problem. E anything else? Anything, anything else? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, just a moment. Yeah, uh, uh, David, David, do you have a question? Would you? Yeah, I have a question. So thank yes, you for please. the talk. Um, I was just Thanks. uh just just wondering if the solutions that you found, I mean, in in the gravity regime, gravity waves re regime, it looks to me that they they're really really similar to the type of of shapes that you obtain uh, uh, in the Rady uh, 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 Taylor instability. I mean, it's, it's it's a different problem because the radio Taylor instability finally uh, dissipation uh, viscosity becomes really important. But those type of uh, kind of uh, fungus shape, yeah, really, yeah the really kind of shape a little similar. Uh, I think I was just wondering if one. if there is more than just a similarity. Mm. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I don't see how it could, could, could be related, but then uh, I, uh, I didn't think uh, you know how there's a problem with surface tension was related to the problem of vorticity before doing the calculation with Vera. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I would have. Uh, it's yeah. true that I, from the top of my head, I remember they, they are pictures which are similar. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, uh, Jean Marc, we have a, a question from uh, Mark Kukio. Uh, okay. Mark is asking uh, Can uh, non symmetric waves travel in both directions? What did you say? Yeah. In a direction. Okay. direction. But in a sense, so, if they're not symmetric, you get two different solutions. Yeah. Okay, so it, it's it independent of the direction, but you should uh, 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 you should uh, um, the uh, invert it, right? Yeah. These are so the solutions are just the solutions of the potential flow equation, so you can reverse the direction of the flow. Uh, okay, okay. So actually, it's uh, velocity squared in the in your equation, not velocity, right? Okay, okay, good. Even for uh, non symmetric waves. Yeah, yeah, you can reverse the direction. Okay, 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 because of that. Okay, yeah, good. E still, we have a time. Actually, time uh, of seminar uh, formally is not limited, so we can stay even after, say, uh, PM. Uh, the standard problem is that uh, uh, people having uh, other meetings and uh, yeah, at say, and uh, so. Uh, usually they are leaving it, but uh, we have time. Uh, yeah, so, I'm here. I'm uh, happy to um, enjoy talking to. Uh, so, so to friends. Friends. Oh yeah, uh, Emilian. 
Yep. So yeah, it's one of very nice. Uh, uh, yeah. So what, do you have infinite layers on both sides of these interfacial waves, or? Uh, oh, okay. I should I should have mentioned that. Uh, the big thing that it's a calculation is has a, a lid on the top and a okay. bottom, but the thickness of the bottom layer is one. Okay. At infinity. Yeah. Uh, and the calculation I, I presented, I believe, is the position of the lid, which is at 80, 180. Okay. So for practical purpose, it is like having a, a, an infinite layer on top of the free surface. Because I was wondering, what was it with shallow where the top layer? So, I mean, does it squash the bubble or something? Or uh, we, uh, it is something we want to to investigate to see if it's mm. going to work to have these solutions and to bring down the the top lid yeah, yeah that's what i was thinking now, in happened? some case we should get to the stable top solution when the waves yeah, start yeah, to yeah. broaden infinitely in the horizontal direction so hopefully mm. we, we hope maybe to study the uh, uh when the the lid is very high you get this overhanging structure when the lid is very low you'll get the stable top and try to see if the, we can understand the transition between these two type of solutions okay thank you and understand it better yeah. Uh, Jean-Marc, is it right that uh, for interfacial wave, interface waves, the uh, the number of uh, solutions is bigger than for uh, than for uh, just uh, free surface waves? I think so. Well, it becomes certain in the case, and uh, uh, Emilian, for example, uh, look at that in which that lid, the top, is replaced by a free surface. Then you get different yeah. modes and all that. Uh, no, no, it's no, no. It's uh, it's just uh, just uh, two infinite layers and uh, two in, two infinite uh, fluids and uh, with interface between them. And then, yeah. uh, if we if we know the solutions, uh, uh, exact solutions for or numerical solutions for that interface, and then we reduce the density of the upper layer. Is it possible that we arrive at uh, the uh, uh, kind of unusual solutions for uh, free surface waves? In the well, it's, it's certainly true, you're right, that for interfacial wave, there are also branch of solutions. And uh, Xen has been computing some of them. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's the thing that uh, we're also still doing. If you, if you find new solutions for interfacial waves, uh, look at what happened to them as the density of the upper fluids goes to zero. Do they disappear? Mm -hmm. And how do they disappear? And if not, that will yeah. give you new solutions for the, the free surface problems. Yeah. There, there is no, I believe, uh, uh, theoretical results which guarantee the uniqueness of the solutions which are known for surface waves. Well, uh, we have one branch of solutions. Yeah. It's possible yeah. that in parameter space and uh, uh, yeah, high you, the parameter space, yeah, there will be yeah. other branch of solution. Yeah, yeah. That is uh, that is not known. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a little unlikely for the, the surface wave, but who knows? Yeah. E, any other questions? We are almost uh, about to finish. Uh, we record uh, this um, uh, seminar, so you could, um, yeah. Um, just a moment. The, um, uh, Jean Marc, can you see chat? Uh, I should have a, 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 I don't know to connect on the, the screen, maybe. There is the, uh, the chat. It's, uh, yeah, yeah the, should be, I cannot the, get to the thing on top there. Ah, you can see only your, only your slides, uh, right? Because the uh, Tao Gao is uh, uh, typing uh, something, but uh, he didn't finish yet. So, okay, uh, well, I can I can wait. I don't I don't know. Nobody else will see the chat. Yeah, uh, I, I I cannot see what he's. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I move, move my cursor at the top here, and it doesn't show me the thing I want. Yeah, yeah, no. I don't <laughs> want to. Be, I don't want to get out of the slides. Uh, so. Mm hmm. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Jean Marc, if you uh, uh, push uh, stop sharing, 
then you can see you can return to your uh, uh, teams. The uh, uh, it, it's the yeah. same. It's the same that uh, square. Oh, oh, I, see, I, see, I see. I see. I got the thing here. Yeah. Uh, whoops. Stop share. Uh, okay, now I have the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, you can see uh, all uh, participants. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the. Okay. You wanted to get to the chat, is it? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, he did not finish. It's strange because he, uh, it was shown that he is typing, but um, the nothing appeared after that. Yeah. yeah and uh, uh, he. And I cannot see him. Okay. Yeah, but uh, many people already uh, already left uh, because, as I said, it's uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 3, yeah. 3 p.m. It's uh, even uh, it's not uh, uh, necessary for us to finish at that. Time. He, yeah, yeah, and Dave is sending here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dave, uh, uh, many Dave thanks uh, yeah. from Dave. Yeah, 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 to you. Thank, yeah. thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, okay. Action. Yeah. So, so uh, next meeting or sorry, uh, next seminar will be uh, done by uh, Hillary and John. Uh, it's uh, next uh, Thursday. And uh, okay. uh, please, uh, please come. And uh, John, I'll send you email about the meeting. Okay. Okay. Looking forward to it. I, I'll need I'll need the uh, abstract from you uh, to include in our bulletin. And also, we need to uh, uh, to make kind of training, uh, depending <laughs> on which uh, computer you are using. Uh, uh, to share to share screen as Jean Marc did. Jean Marc can explain you that it was not simple, and uh, <laughs> we spent almost two Probably hours uh, this Monday, a, a half an hour, Monday to find out how it works. <laughs> so new technologies, you know. <laughs> if Jean Marc took half an hour, it would take us much longer. <laughs> Unless you can give it yeah. less. Maybe he I'm can more, give I'm, it less. I'm more used to use Zoom. So, uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, uh, Zoom uh, is not, uh, sorry, the, Zoom the, is the, not, the pro I the problem, the problem I had on was to, you know, to share my screen, to show. Yeah, 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 yeah. The but, contact uh, is fine, but uh, yeah, the some. I, if I can help her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'd, yeah. much rather, I'd much rather, John Mark, you solve that problem of the, of the wave with the energy sink because it's yeah. bothered me for 40 years. 40, yeah, 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 yeah. But no, it, it's very yeah, so. interesting how, how it's, to it's model. Like, it's, like, it's nice to, you know, to go back yeah. to old problems. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah. put a, you, I'm sure you put a delta function centered at the top of the wave and just yeah. have a, a constant delta function even yeah. you know, with, with the right sign and just see whether you can, as you increase the amplitude, it may be that it could reaches a height. It can just go forever if you have the right. Yeah, energy. that's true. It could, it could uh, remove that 120 degrees. Yes. Then, uh, well, uh, you, you've been on, you've been on an ocean liner, have you, John Mark? You, you yeah. often, you uh, see these. I don't know what they call them in Belgium, but we call them white caps. Yeah, right. white cap. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I have never seen a theory for them yet. White yeah. horse, perhaps. What, or white yeah. horse, perhaps. I'm, uh, I'm not sure how it's possible to include the uh, delta function in a numerical solution. No, but um, it's uh, to, to put a term like that is, uh, well, an analogy to that is like to put an extra pressure term. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. instead of the surface you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can do it and, uh, well, uh, Numerically, uh, uh, you might have, you know, to spread a little bit the delta function. Probably you'd spread it with an error. Yeah, like, like a delta sequence, you put a. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jean Marc, is it, is it similar or not to the uh, uh, waves in the uh, uh, electric field? Because the, in electric field. In it. But the, the electrical fields, what you do is that, uh, well, you have to, to solve also for the electric potentials. 
Yeah, but it, it's a, it gives uh, actually extra pressure on the free surface, all right? Yeah, it, it, it gives extra term, which has a, uh, the Maxwell stress. Yeah, mm. yeah. And uh, nothing inside, right? So is it the same or not? It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, the same. It's the same. So it's, uh, it reduced to uh, you know, a problem on the free surface. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not, not much harder because it's all, all Laplace equation everywhere. So if it's not an uh, electric field, I mean, kind of uniform electric field, but uh, concentrated something like uh, uh, then one char uh, char uh, charge uh, above the water yeah, surface or something like that, then then it could be kind of delta function. Yeah. No. I I, I don't think they would be. Uh, I mean, yeah. certainly to to do it like that mathematically to put a delta function or. Uh, you know, something spread a little bit, or mm. which would uh, mimic a delta function, uh, would work. Yeah. yeah. Well, it would be very interesting. Because I, for example, I think that yeah. I've been do, do, doing with uh, with other people too was to look at a solitary wave mm -hmm. and perturb the solitary wave by something, like a mm. pressure. You would put in Bernoulli's equation. You can do that. But a solitary mm. wave is very dependent on having a bottom to the flow. Yeah, yeah. These waves are there. It's, 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 it's the same thing for the periodic wave, except that, well, the solitary wave, we have only one bump. Yes. So, in fact, a delta function, but periodicity would be on every crest. But I'm sure these rollers are nonlinear. They're not small amplitude. Yeah, right? there will be a... Mm -hmm. no. and, uh, and I think yeah. it really... Mm -hmm. I, I can I can I can uh, I can look at that problem just for well, the please first time with the delta function. I'll let you know, and then you'll tell me what you think. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. if you, I mean, we if if we you try a certain delta function, it doesn't work. You, we might think there's a physical reason it should be a little bit different, or something. Maybe we could have a correspondence on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Very good. Ah, yeah, good. yeah, okay. okay. So, well, Jean Marc, you have one week <laughs> to uh -huh. think about it because okay. we, uh, we, we can meet uh, next, uh, in a week again. Keep me on the you know, on the mailing list so I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Link to, uh, next week. Right. Yeah. Bye. Okay, Go, bye okay. bye. Yeah. Thank you bye for bye. coming, John. Bye bye. Uh, Thank you very Looking much, Jean-Marc. Thank you week. very much. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. So then I'll uh, finish uh, bye -bye. the. Uh, hi, hi. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, uh, actually, actually, uh, Tao yeah. Gao, he just appeared. It seems that uh, he was not uh, on the meeting. Because he, or, or he, he was at the meeting and then he left or because of connection, say, and told us that he couldn't return back. So it seems like that. So the, I hope he, oh, okay. can, uh, he can contact you or he, yeah, he sure, or she, sure. I believe he, he, right? but he can contact you directly. Send me an email. Yeah. And, uh, there is the uh, thanks from uh, uh, Mark Cooker from some of our students saying uh, thank you, Jean Marc. It was really interesting. I really enjoy it. And, uh, yeah. Thank so, you, Sasha. Thank you. Thank I, you, Jean Marc. I enjoyed giving so, the talk. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it was great. So then okay. I stop uh, recording first. Yeah, stop recording. Yeah.